Hey everybody, it's Patrick at the Pitch Deck. This is going to be round six against Bravo. We're going to be four and one. Uh, a little backstory, we actually had a five minute extension whenever we first started because we were assuming that we're going to be on, on camera for the stream for uh, Savage Feats, uh, but they got the wrong Bravo match and they got us instead. So the judge told Michael, who told me, and then got kind of confused. So we had to go all the way back and then got a five minute extension. So we were kind of both a little frazzled, especially me. The point where I was missing my tunic triggers a lot of the time. Not only that, because I was running Spellfire Cloak the whole day until now. So we get a little bit of a hiccup there. But towards the end of this video, after the match, we're going to have a TTS uh, tabletop simulator of a breakdown of how this match could have gone a little bit better, a little bit more smooth. So hope you guys enjoy. And I will point out a lot of the things that during the match that I've also can prove on. All right, guys, we have a pretty good hand going into this. Um, we're going to have a sigil from Michael to start out the game. Going to 43. We got three blues, and then he'll just pass here. Try to get some early damage from either one of us. Fade out some of these. Um... Made out some cards for me to Kano and tried to go over his Arcane Barrier 3. But I know it all too well, so I keep one floating just in case for this. But I think this is a correct play. I think you gotta just, with three blues, try to maybe get pots or tomes or anything early off the top to help advance. Um, so we're sending one here and he AB1s plus. One floating from um, Emeritus Scolding, so then for four, so we keep it just in case for the hammer coming down. And then he's going to just AB2, which is a telltale sign. He wants to keep one card plus his arsenal. So it's nothing too crazy, but he did gain three off of this. So he basically just gained one, so he's going to just hit hammer for six here. I'll just Oasis, gain one life, and then basically take, um, take two. All in all, I, 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 I dealt two, and he also dealt one in reality. So here we're going to just toss Lesson with this Wildfire for three. And it's remained to be seen if I want to tutor off of this because he just takes the full three here. So I'm not sure exactly sure if I should have put something on top. Let me know in the comments down below if you're a Kano main, if I should have uh, done something. But I'm okay with IPing myself here for um, two defense reactions. You don't want them in here, and you want to you don't want them in your arsenal, and you can just protect against a big dominated attack if it comes to that point. So we kind of got an awkward hand. Um, he's gonna send Zealous in here for five. Big mistake for me here though is because it's from arsenal rather than hand it's not dominated so the next one can be dominated if he had the exact hand that he needed so he's just going to send hammer for six uh we're going to sink two things or sorry technically it's opting them down so we saw a tome of aether wind and then a blue so we're going to protect four and four here taking three over the entire turn here but he ends the turn. I should have uh, crude here at the end of his turn instead of my turn. And this is kind of where it falls apart, I think. I should have crude it. But um, we just Kano with the blazing and the tome. And then we go into our turn. So we have Wildfire locked in Arsenal. He sends in an attack for eight. So sending the attack in for eight. Uh, we'll just block two. Unfortunately, we have kind of an awkward hand here slightly. Definitely an unfortunate 
So I think he just hammers here. I think he's hammering. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he just does a hammer for six. And then I think he pummeled it. And so we sink it. So here we'll just snap back. We drew. We'll just go ahead and toss for four. And uh, it was pointed out to me that I was holding on this arsenal for too long for wildfire. Uh, the second wildfire, I should have just sent this in so it doesn't lock my arsenal. So he takes the four. Nothing too crazy, I think. So we have 11 dominated, crippling crush. Coming in, and on this one of those unfortunate things, like I mentioned before, if we had... If we had an, um, a defense reaction in Arsenal, would have helped out, but uh, we don't. And we would have seen one earlier if we had a clear Arsenal, and that's just one of those things that I think I should have improved on. So we cane off the top. we got a red spindle in our hand. We're going to cane him again. And we get lucky getting a Tome of Eighth of Wind drawing two. Which is a little weird. We draw two red spindles. But we can play the chain lightning with one red spindle, sending three, and then have the other red spindle being played with a full pump in her hand with the blue. So it's not too crazy on a crippling crush turn to get some damage in. I think he only gets one sigil of solace off on this game so he takes the three from chain lightning we're able to play this for five so he pays for three All right, no, he, yeah, he pays for two. It's a yellow, so AB2 on it. And it's a bit of a little bit awkward um, seeing these pots plus the gaze, but the gaze definitely goes down to the bottom because we want it as a buffer card maybe later on. Two no blocks kind of blows, which is what I'm considering. This is, um, and it, it's kind of like it's awkward yeah. because I want to get them off so, opting one into there. play off uh, off the top of Kano, yeah, of course. The of uh, cheat them in that way, or at least so, an arsenal for your action point. Keep them both there. So we take the seven, which is again advancing into the dangerous race, and we're not doing too great on advancing our pitch deck pretty fast. So he comes in for uh, an attack for eight here, so we're just gonna block two, unfortunately. So maybe, I think I should have played this wildfire for five off of this D pot and then kept the E pot. Because if I'm not mistaken, E pots are better than E pots, sure. So we see a red spindle. We want to keep that on top for maybe later on. But is an overachieving run here for Zealous. No, sorry about that. That's Rouse the Ancients for seven. And then we end up getting pummeled here. But I think because of everything, I, I, I we both missed the pummel trigger. 
yeah, it's five. So, so I take eleven. five over this. And then he also swings for six, and I block for six. So, there, when I was telling you in the mind state, I am not ticking up my tunic. I keep forgetting tunic. I was like, I've gone six turns maybe without ticking up tunic, maybe five. I was like coming down to the table, back down to the table, our original table. I was already in the wrong mind state. I was kind of not ready for a Bravo match, I think. So we both missed that trigger. Um, and another attack coming in for eight, I think a cranial crush. Blue, and it is not looking too hot here. Maybe I should have uh, sank that wildfire, but I'm holding on to it for a little bit of damage, maybe. Since I've got D pot out and I can play the E pot, but I think that's still inting, I could have maybe sank the wildfire so we're in dangerous territory I think we're 10 here yeah so this is the CNC so he sends in CNC for uh, 6 I want to say tunic is at 3 like he's, he's got a counter, so we see our eye and definitely got to ship it. Scolding in Prague. Not great targets. I bought him Prague and I keep Meritus, which I also think was not the best decision. And I'll come back to that in a little bit. Put the eye back on top. Because we know we're going to change it out with rags. So we do... Crew. Then Kano. And rags. Put the wildfire back on top. Paying into it. I'm going to rag him up and tap with the draw one card. Put one card on top. Or bottom. The eye back. The thing is that we've got two loading, so maybe maybe I should have played boots because the reason of not knowing if I need I have to crew I have to metacarpus node here I have to metacarpus node with the eye to not know what's on top. If I had pitched the uh, wildfire in arsenal, I would have known before what was on top before metacarpus nodes. Pay into it here. So when we pay for nodes, we we see the opt here, which is blazing and Toma Findo. And that's what I was thinking before. If we bottomed both of the blues, we'd get blazing off the top and then another Tom to extend in. And I think, if I can remember correctly, it was two blues, and then the next one underneath it was a blue flare. So, blue flare plus both wildfires into blazing is definitely lethal. I think 45-ish with how much he AB. So, he's going to AB three of the three. He'll pump it by three. We have to use boots here. And then lay out this other one. We can't. We have to use what we banished and have on the board rather than Kano, because we lose it anyways to CNC. We we gotta use it. So maybe threes it. Take four. So three and four to the blue flare that we would have drawn if we. If we opted both down to the bottom from that eye, then we did blazing into Toma Find All drawing two, and then there's a blue flare. Then we would have won. But we send a Meritus for 11, and it's, I think, down to 16. 
I still have Tunic up, which saves me from lethal because he had mentioned a lot of stuff. Very, very, like... Very obvious pummel, which is exactly 10. But it saves me for the Tunic. So, yeah, we would have won. Unfortunate. Had it been that way. So we block three on his Zealous, block three cards, and then he just pummels the hammer for win. And that is unfortunately a loss. I think the beginning was better, but of course there's two points here to make that the, the end combo could have been improved in hindsight, of course, and then better play in the very beginning. So we'll ship it over to the uh, TTS portion of the video. Everybody, we're gonna go ahead and go over the Bravo matchup that we had with Michael just so that we can show the improvements. Okay, so first off, he's going first, and we got him just playing Sigil of Solace, which will go up to 43, and then he passes back. We take a peek off the top, kind of see Dart, take another peek, why not? So here, I'm believing he just wants to bait cards out of my hand, so I shoot him for one. AB ones, and then I shoot a Meredith Scolding pitching two here. And from the two that we have sh uh, shot back, he has uh, two floating. It's only going to uh, be four, so he takes the two, and then he swings hammer for six. And which I figured this what would happen. So we go up to thirty one, resolves, and now we take two damage from this entire thing. And that's good. We we kind of like took the chance of everything, so that was turn one. All right, so we draw four back to our our turn to start. Um, we go ahead and shoot less on the lava and IP ourselves for a double fate, um, which is not too bad because we can just protect from anything here. So we go ahead and shoot for three. He takes three. Now here, I don't know if I could have probably searched or not. It would have been basically um, fifty seven at that point. I think. We would have had one card here that we can hold on to and uh, draw three cards up. So we've already used uh, this. We've not 57, so we've used four cards already. So those would go in the graveyard anyways. So it remains to be seen if we should just like stack more of our deck into uh, a card into our deck. But three blues and two re re roll it into the um, pitch stack isn't too bad. Uh, so we choose not to do it anyways, so we just go ahead and arsenal from there and draw three cards back up. Okay, for the turn two here, he goes for a zealous for five, pitching two, one floating. And then from here, we say no blocks, but we fate for scene here from arsenal, which is a mistake. Uh, we need to do it from hand, if anything, because our hand is kind of clunky, so we just go ahead and fate. It protects from dominate anyways. So we go ahead and we fate. We see a um, a tome, which is fantastic. So we go ahead and bottom that. Um, so it's further into our pitch deck. Um, and then he swings hammer for six. Um, because I think that's he just pitches another card to equal six. So he comes in for six. And we already took one from that from the previous attack. And then here we're just going to do another fate. So we're just going to go ahead and take two from this one here and go down to 26. So we go ahead and opt. We're going to send that to the bottom because it's a blue with our with our two, with our tomes because blues with tomes is great. Um, so here we have a funky hand and he just goes ahead and ends the turn. However, what we should have done, we should have pitched a crew here on our turn, on his, the end of his turn, so he can just pass back. Um, my turn, I would just crew here with Aether Wildfire and just set this into Arsenal. That should have been my play. All right, my play would have um, basically had um, a Tom of Findel in Arsenal, so that way, whenever we have any like basic attacks, we can just block anyways. 
And for this turn, if I did have Tome of uh, Find All and Arsenal instead of the Wildfire, the turn that I put it on for uh, Michael's third turn here, um, he just swings Hammer for six at this point. We could have just taken this here and went down to 20. And then on our turn, we can just, we can Tome or do floating, draw, and draw here. And we go back up to 25. And with that, we've pretty much just negated his attack and we're just gonna be pitch stacking probably pretty crazy, maybe two turns with this here. So this accelerates us that much more. And we've got a sink and arsenal that we could probably play. So what we do is, we're just gonna put this there. We have two floating, we go ahead and peek off the top. And we have just seen a snapback um, off the top. Go ahead and Kano again. You see a sink, we can't do anything with that. So with that, we can go ahead and just dump everything into Kano. And still present four here. Shoot him for four. Flip back over. And we sent uh, four damage plus pretty much blow through what we had. Uh, unfortunately, the sink could not just go further from that. But uh, we're looking pretty good. Um, we can literally be sitting pretty at this point because of the fact that he sends a crippling crush for 11 dominate. Um, here we can literally, we can literally sink and then sink again, going down to taking three and preventing the crush effect. If we wanted to get spicy, we can sink number one and draw back up. Sink number two and go back up. And then from there, we can honestly just pitch to whatever we want and accelerate our pitch stack even more without even stripping cards. So we would be way further than what we were before. So here we're just taking three, going to 23. Um, we can just say Toma find out, but we could also just probably play this instead and just use this for pitch and then put this into Arsenal so we can survive more. So uh, let's go ahead. And if we had Tunic, of course, we can just play this for two. If we had it, because this would be up to three by now, because I was probably not doing great. I can send this for four. Um, there's probably some stuff that remains, but uh, yeah, that's probably slightly better. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I could have sent the spindle and then go from there and then send this down, maybe because it's got one there. So that way we it's still debatable on whether or not we could have gone through some more. And then this is our hand coming into uh, this uh, next attack which from here he comes in for blue cranial crush for eight. So we, for blue cranial crush for eight, we could say that we can block with Aether Spindle and maybe just Aether Spindle itself. Um, Cause we have no tunic afterwards and we can just have used it there. So it depends on for the cranial crush coming in for eight. Um, if the cranial crush comes in for eight, I think we could, if we take five on this and then we can pitch one and go up back up to 22. So we do this, cranial crush comes in there, take one, two, three, four, five, 18, and then he puts this away. So what we, to do here is put this over and have two floating, draw two cards, and then probably then we go up four up to 22. Kind of sucks we have no pots out right now. Uh, we'll probably pitch 
you know. Mm. I'll go ahead and shoot this for two. If I were to think that, shoot it for two. And then switch to Kano. We got another one, so we can crew. Probably okay with the deep pot. Shooting this for five. And depending on between these two, he I might be able to opt and go faster. So this is starting to snowball. I can just put this here. I can go and put this on top. And then we end up with, so after blue cranial, it's Rouse with a pummel plus Anathos for six. So if we go for a Rouse the Ancients, but he has a pummel we don't know about. And I can't remember what he had shown. He had shown a blue plus Starstruck plus pummel or something like that. I can't remember. We could probably do a block Lesson Lesson. And um, probably end up having to pummel. And then after that, we take five. But then so if we take five, this goes on to 17. We'll be hitting with another three, which means another 14. But it depends on if he couldn't do this play, if I had sent so much stuff after him. So it remains to be seen. So it's starting to snowball. All the way from like turn two or turn three of the game where I should have put the Toma find all in my arsenal and I would have had two Toma find dolls from arsenal from this entire game and it lines up with me having perfect information on sort of in hindsight as well just being able to protect from the um, 11 Dom and eating into the um, attacks a bit more um, so it, it remains to be seen if he could have pummeled because he would have it's basically two attacks here if I would have gone about it that way. Um, so it would have been a less aggressive yet yeah, probably this problem wouldn't have happened. And then I could just probably he just goes in for an Anathos um, at that point. Uh, sink below then maybe sink and then is that a sink? Yeah, go ahead and sink this underneath. Drawing one, and then just taking two from there, because I I I think I take one and then two, so that'd be the turn maybe, and then my turn would have been maybe he keeps it in arsenal or something. Um, and then I can just uh Kano from here. I get an E pot. And then I get a second E pod, and then I have no arsenal when he threatens scene C. As I draw up four, and I see my third E pod, so he swings C and C. Um, but he has another pummel that turn too, because if he has like back to back pummels, so if I did the two spindles there, I don't think he'd be able to second pummel me. He had two clunky pummels in hand, I think. Um. Hmm. We have wildfire. We can set up an arsenal, probably. So we could probably block three and be okay. Um, take three. Go down to sixteen. Um, we put there. I could probably Kano opting two, which means I'd probably put. Them both to the bottom because I can go faster that way. And then I th think I run into a blazing. Yeah, so I probably might want to keep that on top, play this for my turn, and then roll in. I don't know what the turn was. So I could have rolled in like this. And there was two blues there, and I could have gone. I don't know what the attacks were afterwards. Oh, I think it was Zealous now, and then this, but they had a second pummel on the hammer. But then that was just only because it was threatening lethal that turn. So I was getting pretty, pretty damn close. 
to my pitch stack towards the end there. That was my pitch stack right there. So I think I could have just survived a lot longer than I did because of those Tomes of Findals not being in my uh, arsenal, plus them lining up with more D-Reacts in, in hand there. So yeah, it, I can see where it started getting to falling apart towards turn two or turn three. All right, that's my analysis of my Bravo game.